All right, welcome back to the channel or welcome to the channel. If you are a new visitor, I am Demarius Jackson. And today, as you saw in the opening of the video, we're going to be talking about and I'm going to be doing a uh, little review on this monstrosity here, a saxophone mute. Now, I know a lot of musicians out there have probably seen uh, mutes before on other instruments. Uh, obviously, brass instruments that typically use them because you blow air in and it comes out one direction. So it's very easy to mute uh, with the silent brass. Um, I think that's made by Yamaha and that's been pretty popular over the years as a uh, as a way to mute the sound that you would normally, but also plug in some headphones and actually hear what you're playing at a normal volume. And that really wasn't an option for a lot of saxophone players. Uh, we were kind of just stuck with playing quietly. Uh, I've heard of people putting socks in bells and just uh, kind of subtoning or going into closets full of clothes or putting some mattresses or whatever it may be to try to muffle our sound or to try to bring it down so we don't disturb either our neighbors upstairs, downstairs, or if you're in a hotel room trying to practice on the road. So this company right here is made by Best Brass. I had to look at it. Uh, came up with a, maybe a viable solution for you uh, if you're interested in this kind of thing uh, that could work for saxophone player. So I'll try to make this as clear as possible on the screen. And as you can see, yes, it is pretty big. Now, obviously this is uh, for an alto saxophone. I'm primarily an alto saxophone player, uh, but I could only imagine the size of a tenor saxophone. I'm pretty sure they make one as well. I have to do a little research, but this is the one for alto. This is what it looks like. All right, so this is basically the front, the saxophone, uh, it would act as though I'm holding it this way with the neck coming out of here. So if you look here, it has a little module. I'll try to get that in there. It says best brass on it. It has a line out uh, outlet and an auxiliary in outlet on off switch volume and echo. So basically just like those silent brass ones, you can essentially plug headphones into this while you're practicing hear yourself back, add a little reverb with the echo if you wanna uh, make yourself sound really, really good. Uh, so I'm assuming like I could probably put on my computer, plug it in, you know, hop in, uh, pop in an Abersole and hear it and play with it and while I'm listening all into headphones. So that's actually a pretty cool feature. You'll need two uh, AAA batteries for that. Uh, going on around the case, like I said, this is the opening for the neck comes out. Uh, you have three, little neck strap, uh, whatever you wanna call these things here. I know a lot of older model horns actually have this kind, kind of thing, so it's, it's a little adjustable. And then we have a latch up here and a latch down here. And on the front, one thing I found that was interesting, uh, not the two latches that are up here, but for some reason, maybe somebody down in the comments can explain it. It has the same thing for your neck strap, like you could play it backwards. It might be something simple that I'm missing, uh, I read no instruction manual, <laughs> but anyway, so those, uh, this is what the case looks like on the outside. Oh yeah. And it has these two openings. Obviously this is some kind of like, uh, I don't, I don't know what this material is caused that kind of flexible stuff. You, you've seen it before. Uh, I'm at a loss for words now, but it's very easy for you to put your hands in there like, so I'll stand up, model this bad boy. And this is where I would hold the horn and uh, essentially practice. So let's uh, cut to another video of where we can see the inside of this bad boy without the horn in it for now. All right, here we go. This is essentially the case in a little bit of my junky home office uh, slash studio, but we won't talk about that. Uh, as you can see, I've went ahead and unlatched these here and on the uh, back end of the case. Let's go ahead and open this bad boy up. Now, this is the inside. As you can see here, this is essentially where the uh, bell bow of the horn would go. These are actually adjustable. So I can take this, this is kind of like a hard rubber piece, hard rubber, or maybe plastic. Uh, it's a little pliable uh, piece that I can move down up depending on uh, the horn that you put on here. And then the same thing up here, this is where your neck uh, area of the horn would go. It would snap into there and kind of give it a secure fit. And it looks like it has like a thicker felt lining, you know, to not scratch up your, your Mark Six or your Super Action Series 3 or your Yamaha Custom Z or whatever it is that you're putting in here. The same thing with the neck, it has kind of a softer material up here where your neck would go out of the case. 
as to not scratch it. And then we have a little thing to separate it so it doesn't come all the way apart. You essentially put your horn in there, close it back up, put the latches on, and then you're ready for action. So let's cut to a, uh, I'll go ahead and put it in the case and we'll see what we have. All right, so here we are with the horn actually in the saxophone mute. Uh, just for reference, uh, this is a Yamaha Custom Z. So yeah, if you play one of those, this is how it will look. I also have an Eastman, a uh, 52nd Street Alto that I play more than I do with the Custom Z. Uh, but I thought, why not? I know the Eastman has a bigger bell, so... Uh, if you like to see that, I might make a video later on. Uh, but this is a typical uh, saxophone, I guess, body style that would go into this horn. Now, like I said, it's held in by these little plastic pieces here on the bell bow area. And if you can see that, it's around here on the neck area to hold that nice and secure while we have the neck portion of the horn coming out. So I'm gonna try and close this in film at the same time. I don't have the budget for a, a big film crew or a fancy camera, this is my iPhone. So here we go, that closes nice and secure. And I'm not even gonna to try to latch it. We'll just cut to a scene where it's already latched. All right, we are back, here we go. Honestly, first impression, first thing I'm thinking is this thing is Heavy. I don't know how much it weighs. I should go put it on a scale after this, but it adds a substantial amount of weight uh, to the horn already. So I have this next truck on. I actually have one of the Jazz Lab uh, kind of harness things. Got a video on it over here if you want to check it out. Uh, it's a good neck strap. I would probably prefer it uh, to this one when I'm playing with this. But yes, initial thoughts are it's heavy. Let's see what it sounds like. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to be a realist uh, when we talk about this. There's honestly, uh, you're going to have to experience this yourself. I have no clue where you would do that at because I don't know very many, uh, I guess, Sam Ashes and whatever other music stores actually carry this thing. Uh, but it's one of those things where I, I'm using an iPhone here. Let's keep it real. So you can kind of tell where it's going to bring the volume down. And you can kind of tell that it does bring the volume down. But you'll have to experience it yourself. Uh, let me play a little bit more see what we got. I guess another impression that I have are or is that my hands are granted they're in a fixed place. I find it a little bit difficult, especially with my right hand, to hit these side keys, side C, et cetera, et cetera. And especially in my in my left hand, uh hitting these palm keys. It's not impossible, uh, but it's a little different and awkward to try to get there, and it's honestly not realistic to how I would practice anyway. All right, so what I'll do is I'll play an example. We'll just say a D major scale, uh, very, very loud, fortissimo, if you will. And then I'll play it soft to kind of hear the difference uh, if it comes through this recording at all. I don't know. <laughs> All right, and uh, another observation that we have here is kind of like whenever you play the saxophone, think of when you play, and for me, I had an unfortunate incident in Thailand where I got invited to play on stage with some uh, pretty high people, and I did not, I was an idiot. My neck strap was in the horn. That stuffiness that you have when you play, like something is in your horn, I get a little inkling of that, especially when I play in the low register. I don't know if it's a pressure thing or something coming back, uh, but that's just one thing that I, I noticed with the response, if you will, of the horn. It's, uh, it does, it's not responding how it typically does. Uh, let's play some low and low B flats. <laughs> definitely 
not responding how it is. Let's play something in the upper register. I would say, obviously, I play really, really loud just to give you a uh, a little background. I guess I'm playing on a jazz setup. It's a Drake Seven opening, so it's a it's a pretty uh, the piece projects a good bit, and I can definitely tell that it makes a difference in my playing. Uh, as far as the volume is concerned, I could see myself going into a hotel room in a clutch situation, and I have to learn a tune really, really quickly, and I don't want anybody to hear me. I, I might pull this bad boy out, or if I stayed in an apartment, uh, which uh, just truthfully I don't, uh, but if I stayed somewhere where I'm trying to mute my sound, uh, I could see this as being a viable contender. Now, uh, is it worth it? I, I I'll leave a link down in the description uh, to where you could find this bad boy. Maybe you can find it cheaper, uh, but I think the last I looked, these things were running for $600. Now, would I rather just pay, play quietly or spend $600 and have all these, um, well, not all of these, but a few you know, little quirky glitches, I guess, that come with it with response and my hand uh, placement as far as technique is concerned? Uh, I don't know. That's a call that you would have to make for yourself. All right, so there you have it. This is just a quick little review on the Best Brass Saxophone Mute. Uh, long story short, uh, would I recommend it? Uh, unfortunately, uh, just for me in my financial situation, no, I would not. Uh, I personally, just just me, I wouldn't buy it. I would just practice quietly, continue to do what I do. Hopefully, find spaces where I could play freely. Uh, most of us, I know, I could definitely benefit from practicing quieter. Honestly. Uh, but if you have some money to spend and you're in a, an apartment or something, like I said, or if you're on the road a lot, uh, definitely check it out. I would say definitely check it out. Uh, it could probably save you a few complaints from your neighbors. Now, I didn't even talk about, or I mentioned it earlier where you could uh, plug in some headphones up here and listen to it. Honestly, it doesn't mute the sound to the point where I need that feature, I guess. Uh, but I guess you could do it. I, I probably wouldn't honestly never use it but anyway hopefully you enjoyed the review hey leave me a question if you have one down in the comments I, I be sh i'm sure to get to all of those questions and answer those for you to the best of my ability smash the like button comment subscribe share it with a friend who's thinking about getting a saxophone mute and until next time i will see you on the next video